King Charles has expressed concern that he might not be welcome in Australia. But I want to assure King Charles III he has nothing to worry about. He will most certainly receive a welcome to country. In fact, if he does visit these shores, he will be welcome to country so many times, he'll likely begin to wish we weren't so welcoming. Now, I understand why King Charles is concerned. He's afraid that people are still upset that 200 years ago, his forebears arrived and turned what was effectively a desert wilderness into a rich first world country. But honestly, King Charles, that's all in the past. These days, we're all about reconciliation, which means the welcome mat is well and truly out. Now, if the king is looking for a welcome, he should arrive in Australia on a Qantas flight. I promise you, King Charles, from the moment the wheels of your aircraft touch the ground, you will be well and truly welcomed. You'll be reminded, as all of us are every time we fly, that you are on Aboriginal land. It's our little way of saying, welcome, invader. You see, King Charles, or as Senator Lydia Thorpe called your mother, coloniser, it always was, always will be Aboriginal land. So, welcome. I promise you'll be welcomed like this wherever you go. That's how welcoming we are these days. Many Australians have been welcomed so many times, we're now asking to stop being welcomed. But here's how friendly Aussie culture now is. Even though most of us don't want to be welcomed, our political and cultural elites insist on it. Even though I was born here, and my parents before me were born here, and my grandparents before them were born here, I'm still welcome to country everywhere I go at public gatherings, in work meetings, even at sporting events, the welcome never wears out. You ask if you'll be welcome in Australia, King Charles? We pay people to welcome us at every event. If there's a more welcoming country in the world, Australians haven't heard of it. I assure you that wherever your motorcade takes you through any city in Australia, you'll see a sign saying, welcome to Gadigal country or some other Aboriginal tribal name with the word country juxtaposed to it. This is our way of reminding you that you weren't here first and that your arrival pretty much stuffed up paradise. So again, welcome. Now, word may have filtered back to Buckingham Palace about an incident last year when the welcome to country due to be given before an AFL game was withdrawn. But I want to assure His Majesty the cancellation of that welcome had nothing to do with a lack of friendliness or generosity of spirit. It's just that it happened to coincide with a minute's silence to honour the passing of your mother, Queen Elizabeth II, who, despite having done only good her entire life, we blame for genocide. You're welcome. I mean, you're welcome, as long as you get here soon. I say that because Aboriginal activist and advisor to the Prime Minister, Marsha Langton, has warned that if Australians vote no at a referendum for an Indigenous voice to Parliament, none of us will ever receive a welcome to country ever again. Which, ironically, if she makes good on her threat, just might make Australia even more welcoming. So come on down, King Charles. You always were and always will be most welcome in the Commonwealth of Australia.